Well, Elon Musk has just come out with the Cybertruck. You've probably seen images of it on the internet or maybe seen one on the street. So today we're going to do a Cybertruck review, but a little bit different. I've watched a bunch of people review the Cybertruck. Towing is a big topic, and I've seen people tow 30,000 pounds, and I've seen people where the hitch obviously failed with what seemed to be not that much of a load. So let's analyze this a little bit. Let's look at this. Let's see what happens. I'll show you a couple clips from some channels, and we're going to look at this and see what what's happening and what's to be learned out of this. So here in real speed, this is how it looked like. Now let's look at this in slow motion. The first time chain is tightened and then there is a jerk to get the front wheels of that Ford out of that culvert pipe. And then as the Ford falls down, the frame bottoms out again. The front wheels lock up against what seems to be a concrete wall. There's another jerk on that chain and the hitch comes off. So why does it happen? So right here that was in real speed and now there is in slow motion. This is the Cybertruck being pulled off of the concrete culvert pipe after it was stuck. And right there, smack, the hitch gets the first smack as it falls down. And then about another three foot fall right there, smack hitting just the end of that hitch receiver and essentially weakening, cracking, breaking the frame right there. So that was previous to what you see the hitch ripping off. So right here you see what's left of the frame. Looks like an injection molded frame, uh, much like transmissions are made. Probably a 300 series aluminum casting. Three, four millimeters thick, like eighth inch, less than three sixteenths. And the way how you get strength is, you see how it all looks like crosses, like you have material going all different directions. That's what gives it strength. The other thing that you see what gives it strength is, or what you don't see is, how these 300 series castings are made. They are typically made, um, of course, injection molded, you know, like under pressure pushed in a mold but then after that they go through a cycle of heat treating quenching uh, artificial aging and even though the aluminum depending on how it's alloyed may only have a, a ba base material strength of like 20 25,000 psi tensile strength but when it's done because of all the heat treat and the artificial aging we can see tensile strength as high as like 50, 60, 70,000 pounds. That makes the material really hard. And hard is brittle. Anything that is hard will break. Anything that is soft will bend. So for a guy who has never seen a heat treating furnace, this is about what it looks like. This actually in there is a steel part. It's not an aluminum part. But same difference. The temperatures are uh, controlled differently. So this is what a heat treating furnace looks like, either electrically or natural gas fired. This is what a quenching tank looks like. In this case, the quenching tank was dry at the end there. So there's a few heat treating furnaces here, all lined up. There's a small quenching tank here on your left. So depending on what parts they are, how big they are, what temperature, what heat treat they need. This is a guy rebuilding a furnace, bricking it out with new fire bricks. Here, this one just has been rebricked. You can see it's all nice and shiny. There is a big quenching tank right here that's being repaired. Um, yeah, that's a HTP Pro Pulse 300. But anyways, new plates being lined in there because the the stuff in there was so corrosive. It got through the side of the tank. So anyhow, this is how um, a heat treating setup works. So this is a heat treating not furnace it's artificial aging furnace temperature in there is 450 degrees it stays in there for eight hours and what it does is it gives you that artificial aging after the heat treat which makes the material even stronger this is when the forklift drives in there a couple too many times those are the doors they're being straighted out and there's uh, ceramic insulation on there and then a fiberglass high temperature fiberglass tadpole gasket on the outside of the door so yeah, anyways, this is how you heat treat aluminum. So my suspicion is this is a 300 series aluminum, a silicon casting with some magnesium in it. 
those typically he treat really well and get a lot of strength and um, the heat treat needs to be just right and again heat treating makes it hard and brittle and if it sees that shock impact load like it was dragged off of that pipe and then the whole weight of the truck gave a shock impact load onto the frame that is where the stress cracks are happening and then later on just jerking that truck off of that um, off of that wall after the frame was bottomed out I'm thinking this is where it's coming from if this is evenly loaded nice and easy then there is typically not a problem applying a load to it like you saw it can pull that sled at 30,000 pounds without breaking because the load is applied evenly but any shock load for anything hard that's that's the end of anything hard so this ties right in with welding aluminum not necessarily a casting but here we're looking at 5052 plate the uh, red line with the red squares or 5086 the red line with the triangles which is like a marine grade aluminum and you see they have uh, uh, tempers like uh, H32, H34, H36 and you see how the tensile strength goes up to like 40,000 uh, uh, KSI and as you weld on it you bring that temper right back down to low 20s under 20 because you take that temper out right out of that heat affected zone where you're welding it so when you weld aluminum plate or cast you either need to reheat treat it re-artificially age it later on pull all the temper out and bring it back evenly to temper or your design needs to allow for certain strength losses in some cases on 6061 uh, plate or tubing as much as 70 percent loss when you weld on it so you need to make sure that your design accounts for those kind of losses so on steel the losses are not as great maybe if you weld truck frame the losses are greater than on regular mild steel so here's what you see an in-floor conveyor with a baler uh, behind it the conveyor starts in floor then goes up the ramp dumps into the baler in the back this is a pretty straightforward deal this is all stationary stuff it's not like on a hitch on a car or truck where you go 70 mile an hour you have a thousand pound tongue weight and as you're hitting that where they, ref where they refresh the pavement you hit that step that three inch step at 70 mile an hour and your thousand pounds tongue weight all of a sudden turns into 6,000 pounds of tongue weight granted your car still has suspension it doesn't bottom out like you've seen it in that clip earlier but the problem is still that the dynamic forces of everything that goes on the road are just so much greater and this is why even on steel I prefer to use filler material welding filler that can handle more elongation more ductility where your welds can bend first before they break so that everything is kind of matched together so when you're towing be mindful don't lose your cool don't lose your rear axles make sure everything is welded on good the hitch everything else and don't try to force it because that's usually how it's gonna end up and then you're just that guy so safe towing hopefully you learned something about aluminum and um, Go get a Cybertruck if you want to. And if you don't, don't.